it's specifically the question or the comment, I guess, um, I could never do that. That like gets to my heart because I know that that's not true. Like the thing that makes you an artist is time spent, is interest and not anything else. Like you will find the way to create art if you can just show up. That to me was so exciting because I think the world needs more artists. Well, hello and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. I'm Clark Underwood and today I'm riding my scooter out to Taylor, Texas. I'm going to meet Sari Shrike in her home and studio. She has a lot of different series with a lot of different subject matter, but always a wild color palette. And I can't wait to see it. But first, I gotta get there. And when I do, I'll see you there. Welcome oh my in. Oh goodness, what a lovely space. Thank you. I love your home. Thank Already you so seeing much. the disco balls and your work yeah. hanging everywhere. There's a lot of my work in here. Yeah, well, I, I'm painting with oils now a lot more, so I feel like it's very handy to be able to just stick them on the wall, and sometimes they get stuck there for a couple months, so yeah. I just forget about them. <laughs> so make a lot of work. Yeah. Or you hang them and you just think, that's nice. I think I'll just leave it, it there. there. Yeah, and I can ponder them. Like, this is my thinking wall, so I'll just put something up there and think if I like it, and a lot of times I'll haul it back to the studio. And, <laughs> and rework some of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. So is that part of your process of putting it in home? and? So some of them that have a hard time finishing up, I'll stick on the wall and live with it for a couple days. And yeah, usually it, the, yeah, the mistakes will emerge. <laughs> well, where are you working at? Oh uh, yeah, my studio is in my backyard. I'll Let's come see it. Show it to you, yeah. Oh, so did you build a separate studio from your house? Yes, yeah, when we bought the place, we knew we needed its own separate space. We had a spare room in the last house and the door just doesn't keep the kids out. So we put it back here and I am so happy with this decision, like so happy. <laughs> Goodness, what a great space. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I had a custom build to put in the skylight and the big windows that are east facing. This has been my like sanctuary. It's my favorite space. I can see the kids in the yard um, and a lot of like magic happens in here. So I, I love this space. So good. Yeah. That is a sizable disco ball. Oh yeah, she's giant. I know, I'm so excited for it. Oh my gosh. So tell me about the, the disco ball series. Cause I've been following your work for a while and when you when you kicked that off, I thought, this is, now nah, that's something extra special. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was actually super spontaneous. I had bought some small circle stretchers and I had them in my studio collecting dust because I had no clue what to do with them. Um, but I do dance parties in the backyard with my kids just on Saturdays and we really love it. And I, I just had the idea and it usually doesn't happen like that. Ideas you usually have to like work for, blood, sweat and tears. And this one just sort of popped into my head. What's fun for me about the disco ball is they have, um, you know, different source colors. It's in a space but the space it's in is not the space it's in. Yes, yes, I'm so glad you picked up on that because that's what I love about them. I feel like I'm an abstract painter trapped in a realist painter's body. Um, and so I'm always trying to look for abstraction in the real world that's anchored to realism, that's familiar and inviting and everyone can participate, but it's also like the best of abstraction because like it's scattered color, it's different light, but yet it's still when you step back looks like that spherical, lovely, recognizable object. So tell me about your your subject matter. So when I look at your work, it's like you have this knack for taking like um, disposable, expendable, like consumerism, pop culture things and painting them in a way that makes you go like, that ring pop is beautiful. What is it that draws you into those things that are like not commonly beautiful? You know, so I, I grew up with not a lot of exposure to like, you know, fine art or anything like that. You know, I grew up with TV. We grew up pretty poor, so we weren't going to museums. So my first exposure to art in any real capacity was in college. And obviously that was very academic and I learned a lot of great technical skill. And so whenever I finally set up my own practice, I remember wanting to combine both of those worlds. And you know the lens of being a child who you know I'm bathed in consumer goods and you know commercials and let's see magazines and things like that. I wanted to combine my love of just like basic objects that I grew up around with like beautifully painted images. I feel like a lot of those things are disposable because they are so closely attached with consumerism. And painting is so deliberate and slow and conscious. And something even just as simple as combining the two felt really like beautiful and authentic and a place for me to like explore. 
I think sometimes uh, people who paint consumer goods get sort of a bad rap that they're just like leaning into nostalgia and that there's something inherently wrong with that. But I feel like, you know, in a world where so much of what we're exposed to are these hyper palatable images, like I feel like artists should be able to sort of flip the gaze around. And maybe you're not saying anything crazy profound in the moment, but I think even just the act of slowing down, painting, redirecting the gaze is a powerful thing to try to grapple with. Absolutely. And it sounds like based on your experience of growing up and looking to that stuff and then later in life looking back at that, it's almost like you're poking holes in your own experience a little bit. Absolutely. I feel like there's a lot of that, you know, because um, you're uh, in a lot of parts of America, the only way you're welcome into any public space is if you have money to spend. And as a kid who did not have that, good, you know, that ability to do that, I feel like I have this sort of love-hate relationship with these buildings and structures and commonly found objects. I feel both protective of those images and yet deeply critical of them. And I feel like painting is a really good way to sort of just sit with that thought. What does that look like? You know, is it that we're just openly critical of all things bright, color, glitter, fast food? Or is it that we just need to be more critical and sort of explore and approach with compassion the people who occupy this space or want to occupy that space? You paint a wide body. So like yeah. you, you've you got all these different silos of types of paintings and then you're doing like like yeah, botanical works. Big juicy botanical. Yeah, so tell me how do you, do? You, are you doing all those at once? Are you moving in and out of them? What's what's your thought process on that? All of them at once. I mean, I, there sometimes I'll be thick in like one body of work a little bit, but I, I feel like if I wasn't introduced to painting when I was. I would be one of those people who had a million different craft projects going at one time. I really like to hop from one idea to another. And so by refining my, my medium and really saying, okay, you can do that, but stick with painting, I'm able to sort of explore and keep stimulated. I get bored so easy. And so by being able to jump between this and a glitter painting and a craft, um, I'm able to just keep myself stimulated enough that I can just keep going and keep exploring and having fun. Keeps it really fun, basically. Yeah. Once every two or three years, our grandparents would pitch in the money and help us come visit them in Florida. They lived in um, Clearwater, Florida. And so all of my good memories are from Florida. My dad was an alcoholic and it was the only time he wouldn't drink because it was around his parents. And so I have these like crazy memories of like just loving Florida and like crying because I was like, I, I wish it was like this forever. Um, if the body of work doesn't have to be about that, but for me, it's just translating that like love for these places. And like, I go to Florida with my husband, he's from Missouri and he went to California a lot as a kid. And he's like, Florida's kind of dumpy. <laughs> I love it. I think it, I see it through the rose colored lenses of the little kid who was like, this is paradise. And so the Florida series for me is just capturing it. It's as, it's, it can be as shallow as like, it's beautiful and I want to have fun with it. Or it can be as deep as, you know, what I told you. <laughs> Well, I know you also do some teaching and tips and tricks. Yeah, I love teaching. It's come really uh, just organically. It started by people just seeing my account. I had a decent amount of following and people, you know, automatically assume it's expertise, I think. And anyways, but people would just ask like, oh, how did you do this? How did you do that? And I partnered up with someone who has a lot of similar uh, passions about teaching and accessibility. And we created Not Sorry Art School. It's specifically the question, or the comment, I guess, um, I could never do that. That like gets to my heart because I know that that's not true. Like the thing that makes you an artist is time spent, is interest and not anything else. Like you will find the way to create art if you can just show up. That to me was so exciting because I think the world needs more artists. I, I don't ever think there's enough because for every unique perspective, like that could be another artist. And so being able to share that and encourage that in other people is just like, it lights a total fire underneath me. Well, it has been so good to have this conversation, see your studio, yeah. see your work, and hear about how you're approaching it, how you're working through introspection and the power that that has. So I just super appreciate you having me out. It's great. Yeah, well, thanks for coming out. I Like you said, I'm, it's a pretty isolating experience being an artist, so being able to chat, like I could probably chat with you for another two hours and <laughs> my voice would be hoarse and you'd be bored, but thank you for coming out. I don't think I'd be bored. We, yeah. we would both maybe be hoarse voice. Yeah, yeah. I'll get some coffee. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, totally. totally. Cool, well, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, it was a great day spent with Sari Shrike in her studio, getting to see her artwork in person and hear about how her childhood and introspection has really informed her artwork and her subject matter. 
just super inspiring and I can't wait to, you know, get on this scooter, head out of Taylor and figure out how to get more of that kind of color in my life. So I'll first put this in neutral and then I'll catch you on the next one.